Where do you start with the story of Jack Dyer? His notorious strong arm tactics? Or perhaps the way he murdered the language as the game's most quoted commentator? If you don't mind, umpire became pretty if famous. If you don't mind, umpire, please. <laughs> well, it was, the, it was an automatic saying that too. Oh, if you don't mind, umpire, please. Dyer is probably the most promotable and markable fellow that's ever been, Jack Dyer. I mean, in the 30s as Captain Blood, I mean, he probably got more publicity in the 30s than most of the fellas are getting today. Now, watch, he makes a fella hungry. For all Jack's notoriety, the dyer that Richards and Davis remember from World of Sport is of an innocent in the big wide world. They'll never let Jack forget the night a transvestite performer came on the set of league teams. My Bear Lady was a, a show, uh, I think probably well before its time out at St Gilda, where there were, uh, I think they were gentlemen done up as ladies. And anyway, they sat on, sat on our knees whilst we did the commercial. Anyway, when they left after the commercial, Jack Dyer said to Bob and I, oh, gee, the one sitting on my knee was a fantastic sort. I said, Jack, it's a bloke. You didn't know what they were? I didn't know what they were. Like, I, I, never, I, wasn't, uh, I was a good Catholic lad. Dyer was a schoolboy at St Ignatius in Richmond when he walked into the Punt Road Oval to ask if he could get a game. When I was, a, what, 16, I went down there, 16, like I hadn't had a shave or anything like that. They used to call me the kid. As the kid's arms grew, so did the most awesome reputation in the history of football. In a then record 310 games, he turned bold foes into carcasses. Coming and fast up 40 knots with a look of savage fire. Captain Blood, Captain Blood. The infamous Jack Dyer. Well, I love that testing your strength on someone like that. I, I love that going through and to see if he could stand up in front of you. Now, in fact, there was a lot in football used to test you out. They'd give you a test, and if you, the test went all right, they'd leave you alone. But if it didn't go all right, they'd give you plenty of it. <laughs> the captain's men, like Max Oppie, grew in his likeness. His mother told me to bring him up. She told me that don't... You, you reckon you made a good job? job? I reckon I made a hell of a good <laughs> job <laughs> too, Max, you know, because you were a bit wild and your approach to everything, I thought, anyhow. Your hair used to stand on end and go red in the face. And, oh, God, well, not so. like Fraser, sure. <laughs> well, not quite as bad as Fraser, but just about. I thought no, you was Jack, learning off Jack, Fraser. You, you know I never did anything in anger. <laughs> no, you were skull-blooded. No, That's I really never did anything in anger. About you. When Dyer introduced the drop punt in the 1930s, his kick was called crazy. He taught it to generations of pimply-faced youngsters, and old Jack never forgot where the goals were. His leadership inspired one young Richmond defender to show courage on a far greater battlefield than footy. Bill Cosgrove lined up for the Tigers in 1942, at the same time as he enlisted for the Air Force. Oh, he would have been a champion, there would be no doubt about that. He would have been a champion. He would have. But then he went away in the war and never came back, never saw him again sort of business. Cosgrove teamed with another league star, Melbourne's Bluey Truscott, as fighter pilots. Cosgrove even decorated his fuselage with the Tiger's war cry, Eat Him Alive, and named his aircraft the Jack Dyer. He was shot down five times, survived 44 days in a raft from Java to Western Australia, and finally died when he crashed a bow fighter named Jack Dyer VI in New Guinea. It was a month before the grand final of 1943. Captain Blood dedicated that flag to Cosy. Even when he posed with the pigeons in Trafalgar Square, the cameras were never far away. For Dyer has been a football legend longer than anyone in the game's history, and always a photographer's delight though the legend was sometimes a myth. The ball bounced and Jack 
hit the ball on and I'm turning to go around after it and I've taken the photo in direct line and it looks as though Jack's given me a nice old swipe across the head. Whereas in fact that didn't happen. Jack wouldn't hit anybody no, of course. He never hit anyone more and, life. Uh, you wouldn't could that. That's uh, how that photo's <laughs> been uh, around for a long while now, hasn't it? Through all his notoriety, Dyer has kept a disarming humility. I, I like to be called Jack Dyer. That's what I liked, you know. If anyone recognised me and I'm not a captain, lad, it was Jack Dyer. Oh, hey, Jack, how are you? I, that, I always liked that, but then all of a sudden some some will roar out Captain Blood or something like that and it upsets your whole half hour. Indeed, stand by for the regret you thought you'd never hear. There's only one thing I regret mainly because I, I, I didn't believe in Brownlow medals or anything like that. I believed in playing to win and uh, playing as hard as you could for your side. You forget about medals and all those sort of things like that. And uh, I was leading, I was I had about 17 votes when I broke down that time. I was going easy at the time. I could have won a Brownlow medal and then been Captain Blood. I think it had been the best double I'd ever had. <laughs> but, but, but I never broke down, so I never had a chance to get one after that. Would you would like to have won a Brownlow? Yeah, I, I suppose it looked all, all right on your shelf, you know, that's one of the things you never ever got. But uh, it's a great honour to be called the best football in the league, I think, anyhow. No, there were better footballs than me. Look, I was rough edges, I had a lot of rough edges. They did, those Brownlow medals have got no edges at all, they're all smooth. And... Dyer is a freak. Um, he's the most popular, he's the most original, He's the, he's the most, he's the best all round football person the game's ever seen. What age are you now? Uh, 80, I, I think it's 80, I, I lost count about a year ago. <laughs> I, did, but I think it's 80, I think it's 80 years, 15th of November I was born. And what I, do you I, want I from, the, was, from the rest of your life, Jack? What, you, what do you want from the rest of your life? I just want to be... Uh, have good health more than anything, just good health, that, uh, that'll do me. I'm, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a, what would you say, a millionaire or anything like that. I don't want to be a millionaire because it's got too many little thing, points and sharp, sharp shots and everything and you lose a lot of friends. <laughs> and, but I, I've kept all my friends and uh, I'd like to still keep them. In a day and age where the words champion and legend are distorted to billy I mean, you've only got to drive the coach home and you're a legend. Um, Dyer, Dyer is, the, is a true legend. <laughs>